present, all right? So enjoy it. There's a lot of good stuff on there from uh, the mental part of playing and just how to prepare. So hopefully uh, you'll use it and it won't be in your bag six months from now and you haven't opened it. Like I know some of you that I asked have a jump rope. Raise your hand if you have a jump rope. I'm just curious. Okay. Hand down. Raise your hand if you jumped the rope this morning. We got cameras here, so don't lie. Okay. Look. I know Bella did. I saw her jumping. Can I ask why not? Whoever answers, I'll like, give them a hoodie. Just we're answer. We're lazy. We're lazy? I'm, like, I, I'm lazy. I need to work on that. You got it. Come on. This is like... Okay, I'm going to tell you the facts of life, okay? And this isn't just about tennis, okay? This is about school. This is about your work, everything. Anything that you do. Okay, first off, I appreciate your, your honesty, but I'm telling you right now, if you're going to be lazy, let's just start with what Nebraska said. If you're going to be lazy in anything, you'll never reach your potential. You mail that in. You know, certain things are like, like not like always black and white or that's 100%. If you're going to be lazy, I can guarantee you right now, you'll never, ever reach your potential in whatever you do whether you're playing tennis or school or whatever you want to do. Now, if you were at a job and you were lazy all the time, what happens? Look how many people would have got fired today. And then we tell you to come back tomorrow and we start all over again. And I'm a little confused about how some of you are you seem committed to want to play three, five, seven hours a day of tennis, and you do fitness, and you do all this stuff that everybody wants to do for you. Your parents, trainer, coach, uh, your cat, your dog. I don't know. I see some dogs out here helping you out, pick up ball. And you guys have a rope, and you don't use it. I'm, I'm just confused by that. If you're not doing, and we had this discussion before, but obviously either you don't listen, because you're not going to listen to me, there's probably not a lot of people regarding this stuff, okay, that you're going to listen to. I've been fortunate to be around people that had a lot of ability, a lot of potential, and I've seen people just will themselves to become great, okay? And it mainly happened at this age. I never, ever, ever had to tell Roddy to jump the rope. I had to tell him to stop jumping. It's time to play. Every day, 2,000 jump ropes. Every single day. Do you think that helped his feet more, or do you think that helped his mind more? Just, you don't have to raise your hand. This isn't like both a prep, huh? Both. Well, it helps both. What do you think it helps more? Mm -hmm. What? Feet. No, it helps your mind more. Because see, right now, you don't want to do it. And when you have to do things you don't want to do, that's how your mind gets stronger. Just like when you play people you don't want to play. When you play people you don't want to play, your mind's going to get stronger. Because you have nothing to gain and everything to lose. And that leads to the next thing. And while I'm on to Roddy, if any of you ever read the book, the one thing that he said more than anything, he said, if I did really good and I worked really hard and I earned it, I got to play someone better. He could have said a hundred different things. That was the first thing he said, and I think that's in the book, because he earned it. Instead of saying, and by the way, he was number one in the nation in the 12th. It was a mon size. The moral of the story is you got to earn it. Some of you guys want to play Isaac or Devontae or whatever. You got to play anybody, anytime, anywhere. And I understand we got to mix it up. But some of you guys are looking at the wrong picture. You're not going to enter the tournament 
and get in the semis. You got to start off with the hamburger, then the cheeseburger, then the filet, okay? Then you get whatever you want in the finals. You got to listen to me about this stuff. We have nothing to gain and everything to lose. That's how your head's going to get stronger. And we've had this discussion before. Would you rather play someone better than you or your level or a little below? Anybody can answer. Better, better why? Um, because you get more practice. You get more practice. Anybody else? That's a true statement. Yes, because like you have to almost... Um, Speak up. Love your mind. Like, if you're more mature, you'll get actually angry. Okay. Who do you think you play better against? People a little better or people a little worse? Better. Anybody? Better. Why would you play better against someone better if you're better and they're worse? If they're worse than you and you're better, you should play better against the person who's worse. Why is that? I mean, here's, okay, oh, wait a minute, I'm going to call Djokovic, okay, because he should retire right now, okay, and Serena, because they don't have anybody to play. They should just go ahead against the ball machine. Who are they going to play? Every day they're playing people who are what? Worse than them. So who are they going to play? Hawk. That's when you, that's the number one thing that all you guys do the best. Hawk. Ha! Huh. Who are they going to play? Every time. Nothing to gain. Everything to lose. Because they're about one thing. And that's what this is all about. I love the fight. I love the battle. I love the competition. I have this enormous thirst for competition. Anybody, anywhere, anytime. It doesn't matter. Older, bigger, younger, China. USA, Vermont, Tokyo, Mars, it doesn't matter who you play. You guys are so caught up in the wrong crap, okay? And the parents too. It's beyond ridiculous. And from what I've seen, it's gotten worse the last 10, 15 years. You're trying to protect something that's just crazy. It's just crazy stuff. You gotta love pressure. You gotta love pressure. When you play someone that is much better than you, you feel different when you hit the ball in the net, right, Chilla? If you're hitting the ball in the net three times against Devante, I bet you're gonna feel different if you hit it three times in the net against Bella. Would you agree or not? Why would that matter? The last time I checked, it went into the net. But it feels different because you hit it in the net against a 10-year-old opposed to a pro person. And that leads to what this is really all about. You guys, everybody here, okay, and there might be maybe one or two, everybody here has a horrible attitude. I'm not saying you're a bad kid. I'm not saying you're a bad person. We personally like all of you. That's not what it's about. But as a competitor, every single person here has no idea what this is about. No idea. Everybody here has to get rougher. You got to get tougher. You got to get meaner. You got to learn to shut your mouth. I've never heard, oh my God, so many times, ever. It's like unbelievable. I've never, it's like, I don't know, maybe we should like put like masking tape on your mouth and play the match and I guarantee everybody would play better. I guarantee it. The negativity. And the one thing that you can mail in, greatness, because everybody here is going to be good in your own way. But if you want to see how good you can be and see how much greatness you got inside of you, whether that's getting a scholarship to college or you go into pro tennis or you're 100 in the world or 20, they all have the same thing. They have the best attitude. They're always positive. They never make excuses. Never. 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 But in today's world, it's like, blame someone else. It's not my fault. The wind, the sun, 
cheater. You know what? If you want to improve, you should watch the Weather Channel, and if there's a hurricane coming, go out there and play, and hopefully it's 20 degrees, and you get the biggest cheater in the academy, then go play the match. Because now you're getting all three things that you talk about excuses, that's how you're going to get stronger mentally. But you guys, it can be 80, sunny, everything's perfect, life is great, and you're out there complaining after two points. How many of you, and you can just sit down if you agree, think this game is mental? Okay, that's what I thought. All right, so now that we agree upon that, and don't get me wrong, there is probably a better way to hit a forehand, a backhand, a serve, a slice, a volley, an overhead, a drop shot, a slice. There's better tactics. That's part of the deal. But this runs the show, on the court and off. If this is bad, trouble coming down the road. Bad attitude, bad attitude. You gotta flip it in your mind. Read the book if you haven't, okay? Flip it in your mind. You gotta take a negative into a positive. By the way, did anybody read the book about that tournament I played in Willingsboro, New Jersey? Oh God, you guys are killing me today. You can raise your hand. Do you remember that part or not? Could you relay it? Well, whoever can tell the story, I'm giving them two hoodies, fresh out of the oven, because we just got a couple in the other day. See, I can't even bribe you guys. Mom, did you? I like Chris calling in a lifeline. <laughs> Nebraska. My That's mom Chris. All the this guy's going to go far. Wright State Raiders, Ohio. Raiders. I love it. Oh, huh? no, I don't know. I don't, right. know. I don't read often. Go ahead. Go ahead. Wait, come up here. Come up here. Louder. Oh, yeah. Great. Yeah. No. Grace is actually, she has a lot of courage and stupidity. I love it. But that's a great combination for success, trust me. you got to go out of the box. Go ahead. Iowa. Um, you're playing a match against the kids. Playing? Wait, come on. we got to be specific. Playing the finals. Because I did play back in the day. I was, like, pretty good. I actually beat Navratilova, whatever that's worth. She was Woo. one. And you're going, really? Nice. Yeah, anyway. Whatever that's worth, okay? And I beat a few other good guys. Go ahead. And the, the, you were playing in the, in the finals of the tournament, Willingsboro, New Jersey. Go ahead. I love this kid. Attitude. There Go. was a parade going on. Like It was the 4th noises. of July. It was the final. <laughs> no, no. I'll just teamwork. That's what it's about. And then after the match. No, 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 no. Tell about the parade. The parade. It's like, they're just thinking like some drummer boy walking down the street like some clown. Okay. There was like a parade. What about the motorcycles? Okay, there's it was like motorcycle day. There was two hundred and like fifty choppers. Go ahead. And and the kid was making excuses okay. that he couldn't focus. Okay, that's enough. I gotta tell the story. Get back here. Okay. okay, anyways, the finals at tournament. Okay, fourth of July, playing some guy better than me, and I lost to him before. We're playing the tournament. Okay? And all of a sudden it's like in the warm up. The 4th of July parade starts. And if any of you have seen that in your hometown, I mean, it wasn't like the Macy's parade, but I did turn it into the Rick Macy parade, okay? It's like there's floats, there's sirens, there's horns, there's whistles, there's like cheerleaders. Da -da -da -da. I mean, there, it's like insanity. There's 250 choppers, okay? There's noise for 45 minutes, okay? We play the match. And because it was a tremendous challenge, initially, right off the bat, I knew I had to flip it in my mind. The guy goes to the umpire, I don't want to play till the parade stop. Because it was like tennis court, Broadway, right there, the parade. <laughs> you could reach out and grab the guy's horn, all right? <laughs> now, any of you guys probably would, if you had a gun, you'd probably turn and fire, knowing you guys. All right, so I saw him immediately go to the umpire and I'm going, there's no doubt in my mind I'm going to win. He didn't even want to play. The moral of this story, this went on for 45 minutes, 6-0, 6-1, I believe, okay? The match is over. The guy's going crazy. He breaks every racket. Some of you guys have been there. If not, I'm sure you'll be venturing there soon with the attitude I'm seeing of some of you until you pay for it, okay? Then you won't break your racket. 
But right now, you just tell your mom or dad. He took all the rackets, threw them over the fence. He took the bag over the fence, did a jump shot with this cooler over the fence, okay? I think the guy's name was Joe. I call him like Joe Psycho. I don't know what his name was, but he earned the name. He went crazy. I got the trophy. I got the prize money. The paper interviewed the guy, and he said, this tournament's a joke. They shouldn't have played it. This is crazy. There's so much noise. It's out of control. I'm never playing this tournament again. The newspaper guy comes up to me and says, your opponent went crazy. What do you think of the parade? And I said, what parade? Every one of those blank, blank chopper guys were my best friend, and I never knew any of them. I loved every cheerleader, okay? The mayor, even though I never met the dude, I loved them all. Everybody was my best friend, because it is what it is, and we are where we're at, and we got to deal with whatever cards were dealt, okay? But this guy, who was better than me, was like four in the middle state, if any of you live in that neck of the woods, okay? Crushed like a, just crushed like a grape, because mentally, okay? I flip the whole thing and turn in a positive. And I don't even like motorcycles. I'm going, I love motorcycles. I love the van. I love this stuff, okay? And was so locked in, the match just ended, and I'm like, gee, I won. True story, okay? And that's extreme. And I told you the other one about Fetter, when they had the hurricane in New York, when they played the night that it was 55 mile an hour wind, guys were tossing the ball and it was like going there and there's papers blowing all over center court and he was playing some guy around 20, okay? And the conditions, they were tossing the ball, catching it, it was just almost really unplayable. Guys 20 in the world, I think it was 0, 1 and 1, better beat him like a drum, okay? They come off, interview the guy, He's complaining, should have never played, the win, this, that, how out of control it was, you can't even play. They interviewed Fetter. He didn't say what well, win, but they interviewed him. They go, what do you think of the conditions, Roger? He goes, I love playing in these conditions. It was such a challenge to try to see how I could play. Where one guy looked at as a challenge, and everything you have in life is going to be a challenge, all how you perceive it. The other guy was like, I'm out of here. Mad, angry, blown. The wind just made him miss shots he'd never miss. Now, those are two extreme examples of dealing with adversity. And here's what we're seeing here. You miss one shot. And here's what we're hearing. I'm terrible. I suck. Or you're looking at the racket. Here's what I want you to do if you do that, which I never understood that, because when you look at the racket, just remember Rick told you this. When you look at the racket, pretend it's a mirror. So it's okay to look at the racket next time. Did you guys get that? If not, your parents will explain it to you, okay? So it's okay. If you're going to look at the racket and like do that, it's never the racket. Never. 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 I could have Fetter come out here right now with a broom and beat Carter. I guarantee you. Okay? <laughs> Don't laugh, any of you guys. This doesn't get Carter. Okay? I'm serious. It's not the racket. Okay? When you blame stuff, it's not your forehand. Get off of that. What's the matter with my forehand? It's not your backhand. Quit doing that. Okay? What should you blame? We'll pick a body part. First off, start blaming either your feet or your brain. That's a real good place to start. Trust me. There's a lot of answers in those two things, especially in a running sport. And that, that brings me to the next thing, the running. How many people here, raise your hand, like to run? I love it. You beat me to the punch. Hand down. How many of you people, how many people here love to run? How many people here 
don't really like to run at all. Okay, now, I think there's something to be said for honesty. Because once you're honest with yourself, then you're moving the engine in the right direction. Once you're honest. But let me just tell you, if you want to be the best you can be, whatever your goals are. Now, some of you just want to hit balls, have fun, that's okay too. But if you want to be the best you can be in a running sport, you have to change that mindset. And I really appreciate the five or six people that put their hand up and said that. But you cannot train. Think about it. I'm playing a running sport where people make me run. And it's all about stopping and starting and changing direction and running for an hour and a half. But I don't like to run. That's like entering a race in Indianapolis and having a pretty decent car, but you really don't like tires. What's going to happen? I don't think you're going to win. So everybody put their hand up. This is the one thing great about life, okay? You can make a choice. And the ones that don't like to run, you got to be all in. You got to be all in. You, you have to be all in about the running. That's a choice. Why would you want to play a sport that requires amazing running and you don't want to run? And you're going to sit there and go on, what's the matter with my forehand? What's the matter with my backhand? Why did I miss the ball? Hello? Okay, now, the ones that put their hand up, okay? Brian, make sure they all get a hoodie because I know there's more here that didn't want to get, like, speared, okay? So everybody put the, he's happy about that. He goes, yeah, being lazy, get a hoodie. No, that's not the message. That's not the message. Honesty is, that trumps all this stuff, okay? So whoever put their hand up, let them go get a hoodie after today's over with. But the way you guys train and you wonder, you're going, well, Jason doesn't like me or Jason's not picking on me. I mean, Jason's picking on me. Listen, the day that somebody says, I saw some smiles here. The day that people don't say anything to you, whether it be your mom or your dad, okay, or a coach or a teacher, I know this doesn't make sense to you. That's when you have the biggest problem. What does that mean then? They don't care. I know it's a tough one. Now, if everybody every day is negative, 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 that's something different, okay? If there's not a balance, then that's a different discussion. But if you don't hear anything, that's a bigger thing. And you want to be pushed. And if you don't, you have to in anything. I don't care in your school or whatever. You have to want to be pushed. People in general are not going to be self-motivated. They're not going to do it on their own. I mean, I don't think that jump rope is going to come flying out of your bag, into your hand, and then one of those automatic jumpers starts happening. But if every single day you jump 2,000 rope and your mom or dad said, you know what, I'm going to give you $100 every single day that you do 2,000 ropes, I bet your butt's out of bed, and it's like this. I bet every single day you would do it. Especially when you get like 16 and you want to go to the movie and you want stuff, you'll, you'll, you'll do it. Why? Why would you do it then? Speak up, it's okay. You have motivation for it. Huh? You have motivation for it. You What's the motivation? $100. Chris likes that cheddar. You're in I trouble. Love, I okay, love that money. Chris. You know okay. me. Yeah, but it's backwards. I love money. And it gets backwards, you guys. Forget tennis. There's only a handful of people here, okay, that are going to make a lot of money playing pro tennis. You might in singles or doubles, okay, but the harder you work, whether it be this profession or that profession, good things going to happen. You could be the smartest. You could be number one in your class in the United States. And I can tell you stories of attorneys, doctors, whatever, they don't do the job. They're smart. They're the best. But you got to want to get up. you got to have passion. you got to want to prove yourself every day. 
and make it better every single day. None of you guys think like that. You think coming here and hitting tennis balls, okay, that you're magically going to get better. It's, it's not going to happen. I'm just telling you. I told you guys many, many times, many, many times, Venus and Serena would hit. How many of you guys have been to Publix? Okay. I know there's an Albertson guy here, so Win Dixon. You've seen a shopping cart every single night and on Saturdays. Kind of like Trump. Instead of drain the swamp, drain the basket. Same thing every night. And a shopping cart of balls is a lot different than, oh, I do a little ball hopper. Okay, which none of you do. But you'll be the first to complain about your serve. Even though biomechanically their serves are very different, two of the top five serves in the history of the game, probably one that's going to go down as the all-time serve. And I can tell you right now, 100%, that girl hit more serves than any student I've ever had in my life. And isn't it funny? She's going to have the best serve of all time. We're not saying uh, the best in Compton, the best in the academy, which is ridiculous. The world's a big place, in case you guys haven't taken geography. It's more than here or Florida or the United States. Best serve. History of tennis. Now, if you do the repetitions, no matter what you bring athletically or genetically, if you do the repetitions, you can almost serve the ball in there with your eyes closed because you got the distance. The best shooters of all time in basketball, what do you think they did more than anybody? Pretty simple, but for someone who's at the top and the gym closes and he tells Mr. Janitor, can I have the key? I want to stay late and I'm going to shoot 500 and he's already the best because he knows there's someone coming from behind you guys got to listen to me i've been there but i'm just telling you serena how did i tell you grace said she developed such a great slicer didn't i tell you how she did it or who did i show it to zaman yeah. or what did i tell you she did she no what did she do i told you that impossible out here and she came around the outside of the ball and tried to hit a wall totally out of the box people walk by jesus she has a horrible serve what's she doing she came and toss it right they had no idea what the plan was because they weren't in on the discussion i'm just telling you she had more serves than anybody and little chili pepper we can't even get you to have courage on your second serve and i keep picking on you because you win all these tournaments and you have so much ability and you're still at 14, a little Hungarian marshmallow. And I just don't understand it. The Hungarian marshmallow will get roasted down the road. Wait till you start, every second serve starts whistling by you, then you're gonna go, Jason told me to hit that. Devante told me to hit that. Vanessa told me to hit that serve. Rick told me to hit the serve. And then you'll start doing it, but it's so much in your DNA to be a chicken. Okay? No, it's I'm never had on Gary and Chicken, but I'm just saying, you're gonna, it's hard to get it out. And it's very prominent on the pro tour. Deacceleration of the racket on the women's tour. You gotta listen to me on this stuff. I see the same mistakes I saw at 12 on kids that I see at 25, at 32. The hole is just shrunk. It's not gonna magically change. It's only gonna change if you change. But back to the serve thing. Roddy, would he get mad? Absolutely. Would he get frustrated? Absolutely. If you don't get mad or you don't get frustrated, you're like, well, I'm glad you do because if you wouldn't, you wouldn't be alive. Okay? You wouldn't be a human. That's a normal emotion when you miss a shot. Now, what happens next? What's going to happen? You're going to have a feeling come shooting through your body. And I don't think any of you are. Yeah, I got him now. Or if you had a forehand that launches off the fence. Yeah, I really like my forehand. Okay, you're not going to feel that way. You're going to feel something because A, this is the tough thing about tennis, much different mentally than any other sport because you have no one to blame. 
boxing, but you know what happens there if you make a mistake. Later, okay, get the ball in the net. What are you thinking about your forehand? Don't say aim higher or more topspin. I don't want a correction. Okay, he said it's tough, okay? Is that what you're really thinking or? Yeah. Okay, well, I appreciate your honesty, okay? What do you think Federer does when he laces a forehand in the net? He says, I'm amazing, I just made an error. I don't, well, I don't think he says I'm amazing, I just made an error. I mean, that, that would be, okay, he already has that belief that he knows he's amazing and he already has that belief that he knows his forehand's good, but I appreciate your courage, okay? No, it's okay, but you're close. You're in the neighborhood, okay? What's he think when he hits it in the net? What forehand there? Kind of close. I'm going to go over the next one. Oh, okay. He doesn't think that. Huh? He forgets about it. He doesn't think anything. You think he hits a double fault and he goes up there? God, I hope I don't double fault again. Jesus. I hope I don't. He, it's like it was so long ago. It was like 50 years in his mind, how long ago it was, what's going on in his mind. Because remember, right now we're talking about greatness, but this is a skill that could be learned. I don't think he's happy about hitting the ball in the net. Or I don't think he's happy about double faulting. But what we do as humans, the way the brain is, we analyze. Okay? And then what happens is you can lose confidence. And this is where the moment of truth comes in about, are you going to listen to the stuff I'm telling you? And bake, you need this more than anybody, okay? Can you flip it in your mind and turn a negative? Because there's going to be a lot of negatives in a match. If you've ever watched a high-level pro match, Djokovic won 160 points, Murray 160. What did one of the guys do when he lost 160? Cry? yell, scream, freak out, I'm terrible. If that happens for five or 10 minutes on the pro tour, match is over, match is over, the game's too big. The women, it can waffle a little bit, but you see the same thing. And your parents can even see probably when you play, I think they're gonna double fall. They can feel it coming by what's in your head. And so this is the challenge, and I hope everybody's really listening. You're gonna fail. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to get aced, okay? If you're playing Devante and he serves the ball and he rifles it by you, ace, and you go the other side and he rifles it by you and it's an ace, and he rifles it by you again, it's an ace. Now it's 40 luck and you're dug in. What are you thinking? And be honest. I'm going to win. I'm going to win this game. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Listen, you got all the right answers, okay? But you're not, that's how, Chris, what are you thinking? That's really what I think. I think I'm just like, there's no way I'm going to lose this game. I just like, I'm okay. super confident. Okay, well, if that's the way you think, then uh, that's amazing, if that's what you think. Now, what are you really going to think? I hope I don't get aced again. Anything else? You might be thinking that. You haven't been in this situation, but I, I know how you're wired. Go ahead. Huh? <laughs> What'd you say? I hope he double faults? No, you're not thinking. Why would you think that? <laughs> Carter, you're not allowed to say anything. Right? Go, okay, go ahead. Anybody else? What are you thinking? Okay. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, the guy serves this first serve. It goes over the fence. You're in a tournament. He serves the next thing in the bushes. He serves now the next one into the parking lot. He serves the next one, he misses it. He serves the next one, he swings and doinks off his head. He serves the next one, it hits the umpire. He serves the next one, it ricochets off a garbage can. Okay? I know, it's like Happy Gilmore or something. So now, it's love 40. What are you thinking of the guy? Okay, that's what I'm saying. You're not gonna think, God, this guy's a great serve. This, this guy's gonna ace me. If Dante launches three ballistic missiles at you, what's the first thing you got to do? And if anybody gets it right, Brian, make sure they get a hoodie. Move your feet. Good answer. Keep going. I've said it before.
<laughs> so that's like talking that. tactics. Flip it in your mind. That's a start. Don't say pray. Okay. <laughs> Intimidate on. Okay. I didn't expect you to, but once again, it's in it's in the book, and you've heard me say this. If something is fast, because he's just proven it's fast, the first thing you're going to do, you'll probably start backing up. You're going to get scared, whether you are or not. You're going to you're going to think it's faster than what it is. The first thing you got to do, the ultimate way to get the ball back, is number one, you got to slow it down in your mind. In your mind. But I don't think any of you are going to get ace, ace, ace. You're going, I got him now. I got him now. You're going to go, Jesus. You know, you're just going to feel this feeling like helpless. I can't get it back. Rough day at the office. This guy's amazing. And I'm going to tell you, it just got faster. It got quicker. You got slower. And this is mind control. And that's what the people do at the top. Okay? I'm just telling you. I know how greatness is wired. Golf, basketball, football, tennis, obviously. This is the stuff you're not going to hear on TV. This is a lot of stuff you're not going to read about. But because they're so competitive, they're so competitive, a la Roddy, all right, who overachieved like no other, okay? Because they're so competitive, anybody, anytime, anywhere, bring it on. Let's go. You're bigger, doesn't matter. I'm littler. I'm faster. I'm smarter. You're littler, that's okay. I'm going to beat you up. It doesn't matter, okay? That mindset of I love to compete, and that should be the number one goal of everybody here. i got to become a better competitor, and that's what we're trying to help you with, and this is what Jason's been trying to help a lot of you guys with through certain things, whatever, but you don't want to be. See, if you're a better competitor and you just love to compete, Instead of worrying about, well, I beat this person and that person, and I'm better than that person, and, you know, I beat that person, but, oh, they did beat me 35 times, but I beat them once, so I, now I want to play this. No, 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 no. That's not about that. If you love to compete, I'm just telling you right now, Monty Casellas, you probably don't remember a lot of these people, okay? She's hit, a, hit against the wall two hours a day. And let me tell you, Wally never loses, all right? Wally's undefeated. Mail that to the mail that in. Does that make sense? Bella? Why is Wally undefeated? What happens? It's always coming back. But you know what? She probably had games in her own mind thinking, I'm kicking that wall's butt today. I'm getting that wall today. You talk about boring. You guys, you gotta hit with someone that's a five star, you know, that's like just one Wimbledon and then you wanna play better. Look at her, hit against the wall two hours a day. Give me a break. None of you guys would do that. That's boring. That's why off the ground, she's like brutal. Wasn't the fastest, wasn't the quickest. I'll tell you, cut the court on the rise, give them a surprise, rip out their eyes. I mean, she was deadly the way she played. And you could see that she was like a machine, okay? I think she had two volleys in her whole career. I don't know if she ever drop shot it. I never saw a slice. Serve, average. But off the ground, just brutal. You could just see two hours every day off a wall. Serena, public shopping cart. Drain it every day and on Saturday. Every day. Dad said, I'll be back. When it's done, I'll catch you later. That's why she can hit that ball right there. Okay, then if you got some athleticism and you kind of got some good technique, it all comes together and this is what happens. But it's about repetition, repetition, repetition. You guys got to understand that. You can't just think you're going to show up and magically get better. Do you guys have to go to school? I don't know what time it is. Now go ahead. You can go ahead. Your excuse. There we go. No problem. So, I need you guys to listen about this competition stuff because you probably 
think I'm competitive, all right? And I'm doing the best I can, and you're not. I'm just telling you, you're not. You're not anywhere near it. You're not anywhere near, okay? And like some of you guys that probably work with Jason, that's probably why it drives him crazy. Because, you know, average serve, no, nothing personal. Average forehand, average backhand, average volley, average slice, okay? Average everything. Just a nasty, brutal competitor. And he whips every one of you guys' butt still. And he doesn't even practice. And whether he's playing against Dante or he's playing against little Puerto Rico, I bet he'd be the same. Me and Ali were laughing. Even when you were demonstrating the other day, you were like running. It's like, gee, that's intensity every day. If you're this, that's what you become. But you can't be bing, bang, boom. You can't be all over the map. Every single day, you got to bring it, and it becomes a habit. And right now, a lot of you guys have a lot of bad habits. Laziness, talking, messing around, not serious, not running making excuses all that stuff affects your forehand and your backhand you got to listen to me about this stuff Sharapova forehand from outer space okay how many of you read the book god no one read the book maybe we should have uh, the free book I don't forehand was so was so bad now this is beyond bad all right she's gonna see this I'll pray anyway her forehand was so bad at 11. So bad. Go, what were we going to say, Zaman? He thought he had left he Me and her dad switched her to play left handed. That's just like saying, oh, my kid's head's not that good. Let's do a brain transplant, put something else in there. We're going, ah, okay, well, then she did her lefty forehand. It's like this. Because her forehand on this side is just like, didn't matter. It worked. Like I said, listen, she ain't never going to beat Venus. She'll never beat Serena. There's there's no way. She'll end up 30, 40 in the world with that forehand. Okay, it's switch. So she's out there. Boom, boom. He's out there. Da, 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 talking Russian, how to hit the forehand. She's out there. The problem is her backhand now looks like that. So we solve the problem, create another problem, okay? Then the IMG agents come down and say, no, no. She's going to have all these endorsements because she has the look and she has this mental toughness that you say, blah, blah, blah. The moral of the story, she stuck with left-handed for six months, 11 years old. And then she eventually went back to right-handed. And even on the Pro Tour, her forehand is manageable, but it's not one of the top 100 forehands on the WTH. She takes the ball early so she can hide it. But the moral of the story is, okay, she was so mentally strong as a competitor when i told jury this i said i don't know where it's going to go it's as tall as your wife six feet tall that's going to help her serve but mentally i mean she just like doesn't matter what happened every day locked in you know what the exact opposite of locked in is right what yeah. huh yeah. you're locked out okay <laughs> Just to see if when you go home, you don't do what you're supposed to, you get locked out, then it send a message, okay? You gotta be locked in. Every single day, locked in. She had no forehand. There's 15 people who are the better forehand. Some of you guys are 10 years old. It matters, but that trumps everything. And the movement was average, okay? I mean, it wasn't like she was a jet, like Venus or Serena, but mentally, every day, so locked in, how you get it, I don't know. I went to look for it at Walgreens. I couldn't find it. It's not bottled up. I don't know how you get it. No one knows how you get it. I just know that she had it. Same with Roddy. Same with Roddy. Had an older brother, 17, All-American, Georgia, finals Australian Open, lots of Magnus Norman, two in the country, one of the best, okay? I said, what are you going to do? When your little brother beats you, no way, no way. Then he pushed him on the ground or whatever, kind of like Baker and Carter. No way, that little shrimp, no way. Then all of a sudden, 18 years old, you're 6'2", 180, and you're serving 130. Brothers, whoa, where'd that come from? Things change. You guys can change if you want to. But I don't know if you guys want to. You want your mom to do it for you, your dad or the coaches. 
or whoever. You gotta work your tail off. When you go home, you gotta do stuff. Don't say, I don't have time. You all have time. We make time. If you want, it's a choice. Everything comes down to be a choice. And I'm giving you the blueprint. I'm just telling you, I've seen this stuff. I've seen this stuff. Jennifer Capriotti, no doubt in my mind. No serve, no volleys, no slice, brutal ground strokes, okay? Locked in. If we played five hours, she'd go, can we play more? So I call me up, could we play on Sunday? Just love to compete. Didn't matter. Just love to compete. It didn't matter. Older, younger, love to compete. Love to compete. So that's the way Venus was at a young age. They all, everybody got mad. Serena, she didn't mean Christmas. You read, anybody read the book? I mean, it's unbelievable. I go, move your feet. She'd go, why? I go, well, don't you want to be as good as your sister? She goes, no, I'm going to be a lot better than her. Okay, even though it's 0 and 0. But she was 12 years old, by the way. The girl that won the Orange Bowl 12 and under beat Serena 6-0, 20 minutes. Alina, uh, Lena Weingarten. You're going, oh yeah, I remember that's a household name. Okay, she did get to 7 in the world. And I'm sure you've heard of Serena. And they're both 12, same age. It's not where you start, it's what? Finish. But you gotta make the finish. You gotta, every day, you gotta keep getting better. You gotta keep getting better. But this competition stuff, that's the number one quality that all of us, that we can help you with. And the parents can help the kids with. If you're a better competitor, everybody feels pressure. Everybody felt pressure. Venus and Serena felt pressure. Look at the pressure. They're iconic, they're legendary, they're great. They're the best thing since sliced bread. I'm saying they're gonna be one and two in the, in, in the world. And they don't play tournaments. And then you got some crazy dad who's saying like, and so you talk about pressure on pressure. I don't believe in pressure. There is no pressure. Pressure is your best friend. If you want it to be, you gotta want pressure. But you guys don't even wanna play someone that if they beat you three times and you beat them the last time, I ain't playing them again. I'm better than them. Ridiculous. You're not anywhere near understanding what this stuff is all about. Even the best of the best, every day they're trying to get greater. But the competition stuff, I saw it in Sharapova. I've seen it hundreds and thousands of kids. Whether they went on to play high level college or they played pro or they became a superstar, that's other factors, okay? It's not just, I've had people, amazing competitors, and they went on to become just amazing, overachieved. Average forehand, average backhand, average serve, average volleys, average athleticism, 300 in the world, crazy, okay? But you know what? They're like at the mountaintop. I just read something where there's this football team that for four years, they never won a game. They were like 0 and 40. And like everybody on the football team is like so successful, it's unreal. Because they learn so much from just getting their butt kicked every single day and not getting candy and hoodies and t-shirts and lollipops and peanuts that you guys still on my shed, which we'll talk about later, okay? You gotta earn it. It made them tougher. But we all wanna help you, your mom, your dad, the coaches. Because if we say it too much, no one likes me. They don't like me. They're picking on me. Okay, and I told you, if it's a blend, that's what you want. You want criticism. You want someone in your face. You want someone telling you every day. And anybody I've ever talked to, they say the same thing. More when they're older. God, you were right. They all say the same thing. Bethany Maddox Sands, anybody know her? Yeah. Okay, perfect example. I just pick her up every morning, 5.30, okay? Yeah, she had to get up when I do, okay? She pick her up 5.30, drive her to the academy, okay? Every morning, 5.30. Good player, not super big. She won this many nationals. She, I don't know if she's top 10 in the nation. 
she was at the net almost as much as the net is at the net. And the net's there, what? All the time. And I told her that. I said, I don't know how big she's gonna be, how strong, good forehand, okay? Great competitor, guaranteed. Number one in the world in doubles. Everybody, they said 13 years old, everybody will want your daughter to play mixed doubles. I don't know how big her game's gonna be, okay? She got passed more than anybody in the history of the academy. And every time she got passed, what happened? She aimed that again. What? Yeah, she aimed that again, but what? She got better. She got better. You guys come to the net and you get passed. I ain't going there anymore. I've been in there this month. I ain't doing that. I'd rather be right back there and die slowly. I'm going to die slowly. I don't want the knife going in immediately. She got passed more than anybody. Guess who missed more overheads than anybody? She did. Why? Huh? She got more. Let me tell you something. I guarantee, okay? And this is like a money back guarantee. I can show every one of you, you'll never miss a volley the rest of your life. How many of you would like that? Raise your hand. How is that possible? Let me finish. How's that possible? If you never come to the net, I guarantee you'll never miss a volley. And then what happens is you're in a match, it's four all, some girl hits a frame or some cheesy crummy shot that you deserve to win the point and now you've got to say, i got to come to the net. And you're up there and it's like that parade I was telling you about in Willingsboro, New, uh, New Jersey. You're going to have the choppers. You, it's just, you're going to be so freaked out, you will just probably, you might have a heart attack and just fall over. <laughs> I'm serious. You watch Bethy Maddox saying, the ball comes, she's like this. The ball comes 80 miles an hour to her right. She's there like eating a sandwich going, hey, geez. That's how relaxed she is. Just like Pete Sampras. Anybody remember him? God, I'm getting up this, okay? Easter Bowl at the net, 100 times. Just, he got carved up like a Thanksgiving turkey playing David Cass, one and one. I'm sitting there with the LSA representative, that's a clothing line, and he's saying how good this kid is, David Cass, number one in the United States, 14 and under, because he was short, he was fast, he had a mustache, he had a beard, he had hair under his arms. The guy was already 18, he was 14. That's a different subject. He was very mature. Here's Sampras, some little weed, hitting a one-handed backhand, which looked kind of weird, okay? Sticking his tongue out, serving a certain way, a pretty flat forehand, one and two. Coming in that all the time. I go to Robert Kaplan. Who's that guy's dad? He goes, he's down there with the mom. So dad's like 6'2", or whatever. I said, that kid right there, is by far the best player in the tournament. And right then, the guy with the less say, he wanted to like take away my sponsorship. He thought it was like, what, he couldn't even understand. He thought the other guy, who was number one, the hairy short little guy who never missed the ball, was like a machine. And the guy just drilled everybody in the ground. Okay, moral of the story. That guy, good player, number one at Michigan, played on the Pro Tour, Pete Sanford. rest my case. He's there coming. I'm not saying everybody start charging the net later today. All I'm saying is he's coming to the net 24-7 getting past, failing, getting lobbed, but I'm looking. He's making the right move. I like that forehand. You can like cut the court and hit it flat. Backhand's a little cheesy. I don't know about that, but he's coming to the net. He looks like he knows what's going on. More of the story. He's 18 years old, playing New York, He's warming up. He's playing the practice set, I think, with Tommy Ho, boy that I coach. Tommy's passing, and before the ball's even hit, Sampras is like, he's got to be kidding me. And he's just standing there waiting on the passing shot, so calm, so collected, laughing, instead of like, whoa, geez, whoa, I didn't know where to go, whoa, I didn't know where to go. And that's where a lot of you guys are heading, because you don't want to come to net, because you're a chicken, all right? And I'm going to tell you right now, if you're a chicken, hey, if you're a chicken, what do you get better at? I mean, it's good to eat chicken. I eat a lot of chicken, but it's pretty common sense. But here's what happens when you get 16. Isaac, did you come to the net more 
at 16, 17, 18 than you did at 11, 12, and 13? Because I never asked you this. Okay. And he comes in that a lot. Why? Whatever like, you say is right. I like coming to the net. Okay, like coming in. Well, he also did it because you were bigger and stronger and you had more juice. So, and you had more maturity, which is the wild card. And this is what everybody does. You get older and then you go, I got to be more aggressive. I got to come to the net. I got to take the ball early. I got to control the center of the court. I got to take more chances. Okay, but th the reason I bring this net thing up because it's the number one neglected thing in junior tennis. It's crazy. And you might play a match where you might be up there two times. You might be up there two times. And then the next match, you might be there 20 times. Because everybody has a different style. And you just want to, all I expect you to do is to be comfortable. And the only way you'd be comfortable with anything is what? Practice. You get uncomfortable. You got to be uncomfortable. There's, I read that somewhere. Which none of you guys read the signs, okay? You guys got it, you, you got it all backwards in your head. But all we ask you guys to do, and it's a tough one, no excuses, anybody, anytime, anywhere, take that approach. You want to play someone better or worse? Come see me. And if I have to tell you the facts of life, I'll just tell you what's going on. I'll give you opportunity, or I'll just tell you exactly what is going on. But remember what Roddick said. He could have said a thousand things. He said, the thing I remember most, I had to earn it. And he was number one in the nation. Think about it. He had to earn it. I wouldn't let him play 16-year-old. Tommy Ho, perfect example. He gives a speech at the UST in front of 500 people. He says, out of nowhere, he just brings up when I used to work with him. He said, Rick would make me play guys, top 10 in the nation, because he took he took every one of their arms off and leg and their head when he played. The guy would lose nine games at a national. He won every singles and every doubles. The grand slam, never been done. Still to this day, the youngest ever, since 1988, that's a while ago, to win Kalamazoo. Record still stands. Better than Agassi, Chang, blah, 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 blah. He didn't make it because agility. That, he did okay. 13 in doubles, 80 singles, decent, but he makes like five million a year. He's like the smartest guy ever. Anyway, the bottom line is, okay, you got to want to play anybody, any, anywhere. Don't make excuses. And you got to want to compete. You got to want to compete. Oh, I don't want to compete today. I want to drill. This is, you don't enter a tournament and drill. All right. You got to want to play. You got to want to lay it on the line. You cannot hide behind this stuff. This is the mental part of this sport. And the more you lose, and the more you fail, what's gonna happen? The more you're gonna succeed. You have the right answer, but you gotta believe that. Venus never won a match two and a half years at the Academy. I told you guys that before. Never won a match, a practice match. Now, she was playing people a couple years older, never won a match. Could you imagine what you would think like if you hadn't won a match in like a month here? And she was playing people a little better or her level, or what the parents would think. How's your daughter doing? Oh, she's doing great. She hadn't won a match in two and a half years, all right? <laughs> I rest my case. Number one in the world. Rougher, tougher, stronger, can handle anything. The dad wanted them to play people who cheated. When it was really windy, he goes, have VW go play a match. Have Jamaica go play a match. That's Serena's middle name. I don't want those new balls, Rick. Give me, give me the worst balls you got. Give me those old ones. Because you got a lot of them here. Give me a lot of those old ones. And put, put me on the backcourt. Put them on the backcourt. She'd get thumped. She'd feel bad. They go home, eat dinner, they go to bed, wake up, strap and do it again. Don't overthink it, don't underthink it, you gotta listen to me. Wherever it leads, I don't know, you guys have your own script to write. But you gotta listen. You've gotta become better competitors. 
There's only one, maybe two people here that are trending as a relentless, brutal competitor. A lot of you hadn't even hit the 25% mark yet. And this is what I saw. Roddick, Venus, Serena, Sharapova, Jennifer. And that's the wild card of why they made it to the top. It's not the forehand, not the back. I tell Venus, make it shorter. Dad say, make it bigger. Okay, <laughs> that's a whole nother discussion. The point I'm trying to get at is that's the only common thread. But we get caught up in, how'd you do? What was the score? What's your ranking? ITF, ABC, EFG, all that other crap, which is stupid. Doesn't matter. William Sisters played no tournaments. Not that I'm saying you shouldn't do that. Chang never got on an airplane, left the country. Either at, either at Sampras. I'm just telling you, many ways to mountain pop. At the end of the day, it all starts here. And some of you guys got to learn to become a better competitor. Quit making excuses. Run for every ball, which that's that shows me right off the bat. Because if you are totally focused on the competition, I love to compete. Every single point, even if you get mad, when you get back up there, all your focus on is, I'm knocking that guy out. That's it. But you guys let all this filter come in and you just drop games and points and you have been a bad day and then you overthink it. You gotta put it into a drawer, put it into a compartment after you lose a point, okay? And that's the wild card. I don't think any of you hit an ace and go, what's the matter with my serve, right? So you let the situation motivate you or inspire you. But when you fail, now you're gonna be challenged by that thing that goes into your head. How are you gonna to respond to it? Are you gonna flip it, go back to the fence, towel off, look at your strings, all that stuff is good, but you can go towel off, look at your strings, come back up there and be nervous and mad. But uh, I can give you like a kind of a formula, but there's no magic. Because you gotta recalibrate and feel the same way at 0, zero as you do down 0, 06. How many of you guys are down 6 0, 2 0, and you're playing and you feel great? Raise your hand. Puerto Rico, come on. I'm asking your dad about that. Yeah, he's laughing back there. How do you think Federer would feel if he's down 6 0, 2 0? Amazing. Huh? Amazing. Okay, you just said amazing. Why don't you do that? Don't listen to me, okay? I'm just a messenger that has been near the dance. Those guys are dancing. So if you just said a better feels amazing, do you, why don't you try to do that? None of you have a disease, okay? It's all a choice. You're letting the situation control you instead of you control the situation. And it's the hardest thing to do in sports. I don't care if it's golf, football, big, I'm just telling you. And it separates great from good. You're all going to be good. You're already all good. But if anybody want to see how great you can be, you better you better get this right, and you better start listening. They're all about the competition. Roddick didn't he didn't have time to get caught up in that. Here did Serena. Okay, didn't have time to get caught up in that. And the one final note that I expanded upon earlier about the Serena thing: it's not where you start, it's where you finish. At 12 years old, I just told you, the number one player won the Orange Bowl and beat Serena 6-0. Okay? And there was days that she was lazy. She didn't want to run for balls. But the one thing that would always happen, thousand percent, if we played a set, I don't care if she's playing a dog, okay? If we played a set, just scared. She would run so hard for the ball to try to get it, she would literally dive on the clay court for the ball. Roddick would dive on the hard court. I'm not recommending this, I'm just saying, that's how bad they wanted the ball. And that rubs off, but that becomes your character, your persona. Anytime there was competition, even if she lost, just crazy, she just played up to her ability, even if she got killed 6-0, because just mentally she fought. Okay? She fought every single point. She didn't feel sorry for herself. If you guys are down 6 six oh two oh, my forehand's terrible, my backhand's terrible, the world's against me, 
my dog has to go to the vet, there's no food in the refrigerator, I'm behind in school, woe is me, you're just, your mind's everywhere. You're missing what this is all about. The only thing you got control over is one thing. And what is that? Attitude. Your attitude. Remember that the rest of your life. Because there's all kinds of things that are gonna give you choices and filter. You got control over attitude. And if you don't have an amazing attitude, every single point in this sport, you're gonna lose points in games so quick it'll go like that. And you're gonna be challenged. And that's what you see at the top. These guys can lose 160 points and you can't tell who's winning or losing a high level pro match, especially with the guys. You go to a junior match, Winning, losing, losing, losing. You get over. Listen to me about this. It's not about working harder. It's not about hitting more forehands or backhands or playing more matches. That's the easy part. It's the thing that you, you don't feel sweat. It's mind control. And if you listen to what I'm saying and you start applying it, not Monday, Wednesday, Friday, every day. If you apply it every day, what would happen? You'll become that type of person, okay? And it will help you with your tennis, school, wherever this leads. But if you're on that other thing, the blame game and excuses or whatever, I don't care I don't care if you're one in the world. I know people have been one in the world, they got the 200 in the world in the pros. I know people didn't play pro tournament and got the one in the world. I've just seen it every which way. It starts with there. And if you can control this 24 seven on this court, if you're losing 6-0 and you're down 3-0, can you be having fun? Yes. Yes. How many of you would be having fun? I don't think you're getting your brain speed out. You one point, one or two points. God, this is a blast. You wouldn't be doing that. It would be just, you'd, you'd freak out so bad, you would make it so much easier for your opponents, which your opponents have already seen. You're just checked out. You're just checked out. And then your opponent just thrives on that and they just put the knife in because they're relentless. I've seen people down 6 0, 5 0, 40 love, come back and win. This sport's a crazy sport. It's so mental. Different in golf because you got to run before you hit the ball. I'm just telling you, it's the toughest sport to play mentally. And you guys need to listen to what I'm saying and look at this as a challenge, okay? Because you're going to be challenged. And listen, you can have the best attitude and be positive and be pumped up and feel great every point and you're still gonna lose 0-0. Is that possible? Absolutely. Because the only thing you got control over is what? Attitude. Thanks you guys, I'll see you later. We're done.